There is the technology doctors are using to help reduce surgery time and speed up your recovery. Dr. Diego Ramos is here to explain. What's it like going to med school? We talked to some students and asked the questions you're thinking. The Dean of Burrell College stops by to share his vision and advice for getting into med school and keeping your marks high. That coming up. We have members of the Student Org Black Health Empowerment Alliance in the studio to share their perspectives on overcoming health disparities and representation within the medical community. All that and much more. Let's get started. This podcast is sponsored by Western Summit LLC, proud supporter of Burrell since our inaugural year. Western Summit specializes and protects medical healthcare practitioners nationwide for all of their medical professional liability needs. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the DO Pulse. Uh, I am your host, Sydney Alvarez. This show is about osteopathic medicine, education, and community. And it's brought to you by Burrell College of Osteopathic Medicine and sponsored by Western Summit LLC. We have a great show lined up for you today and joining us um, two fantastic individuals. Uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. William Peratt. He is the Dean and Chief Academic Officer. Welcome to the show, sir. Thanks for having me. And next to uh, Dr. Peratt is Tyler Cromady. She is a second year student doctor. Thank you for being here. I'm super excited to speak to you both. And um, I'm gonna start with you, uh, Dr. Peratt. You know, when it comes to, to the school and the guidance that you're offering, I mean, that's a lot of weight on your shoulders. How do you do this? How do you try to steer our school and our, and our students in the right direction? Well, first, it's, it takes a team, and fortunately, we have a good one. Um, you know, I think, I think our, our charge is twofold. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've got one eye on today and, and what's going on currently operationally, uh, and then one eye on the future and uh, following national trends, uh, looking at accreditation standards, making sure that we are not just complying with standards as they exist today, but looking to see where medical education is going and being prepared to adapt to the changing education field. You know, field. I, I'm just thinking about What's a day like for you? Give, give us a, a day in the life of the Dean of Burrell College of Osteopathic Medicine. What's that like? Um, you know, it, it really is pretty straightforward, I think. Um, starts every day with a team huddle with, uh, with our leadership team, uh, just to be able to take the pulse of whatever people have going on. Uh, and then we launch into our day. Uh, it, it may be meetings with faculty or with staff or mm -hmm. with students. It may be outside meetings. It may be planning for future uh, events uh, or looking at curriculum changes uh, or looking at new education models, uh, whatever whatever the, the situation calls for. You know, Tyler, I, I flip it to you. <laughs> What's a day like for you? Uh, and you know, and we brought you on here because you are the, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're the um, president of our student council, right? What's the formal title? So my formal title is executive board president for our student government association. Perfect, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you for that. So tell us, what's a day like for you? Uh, first and foremost, it's busy. Um, some days are a little lighter than others, but mm -hmm. you know, like Dean Fred, some days are a little ebb and flow, but mostly lectures in the morning, mm -hmm. afternoons filled with you know meetings or catching up on emails and trying to sneak in some studying there, but all in all, just making sure studies do get taken care of while managing you know, an entire SGA board and mm -hmm. organizations that we have on campus as well, making sure their needs are met as well. Well, let's talk about those organizations. We mm -hmm. chatted a little bit earlier. We have about just under 70 student orgs here. Tell us about this. Yeah, so we have an incredible student body that's very active and, and very involved with the community and different national organizations. And so we've ended up with close to 70 of those, just depending on interest and um, what students feel are important in their education, you know, outside of curriculum. And so we have a lot of different organizations like our pediatrics club, mm -hmm. our emergency medicine club, and then some social ones, including um, the Black Health Empowerment Alliance and the LGBTQ ones. And so they do a variety 
variety of different events, um, some related to health, some are a little bit more um, social. Mm -hmm. I think we have a watercoloring social coming up here soon, and we know we could use a little bit of we can relaxation. Use a little bit. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so they're very active, um, but they're very big on community as well. So a lot of volunteering opportunities come from these organizations. You know, and Dean Peratt, this is important because not only is there the academic component, of course, and the training and the teaching, but there has to be some sense of community as well on campus, right? Sure. And uh, I, I think we have done a good job of creating a culture where faculty, staff, and students all feel part of the community and all feel that they're contributing to our mission. Uh, I, I will say we're very mission driven. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that, that sense of community um, has a built in element of service. And, and so that helps us go into the community to engage the region that we serve and, uh, and try to make a difference. Dean Peratt. Dr. Peratt, tell me a little bit about your background. So um, uh, going all the way back, I grew up in a small town in Texas, um, uh, went to medical school at Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine in Fort Worth and then did an internal medicine residency. I practiced medicine in private practice in small town Texas for the first half of my career. Mm -hmm. uh, so for, for uh, almost 20 years. Uh, and then branched into, I, I relocated a practice that gave me the opportunity to get involved in medical education. Uh, it occurred to me that that was a more lasting way to mm -hmm. leave a legacy, uh, to, to help train the next generation. And so such as I, Tyler. As such as Tyler. Uh, I began serving as a preceptor uh, and then began directing programs and became an associate dean. Uh, and, and all of those roles help prepare me for this role to lead the school. You're speaking from experience, right? And sometimes what you learn academically, what you learn in the classroom, uh, isn't always necessarily what you learn in real life, you know, the experience. And, and you, you bring that with you and you apply that as you're applying it to the curriculum and, and the strategies for the school. Tell us about this. Well. Um, I'll agree that uh, medical education is, is a field of its own uh, and when physicians can bring their practice experience, uh, their business management experience, uh, and, and really just life experiences into the medical education realm, I think it helps students see the practical translation of all of this information they're trying to manage as students. Uh, knowing that they're going to be able to apply this knowledge mm -hmm. in the very near future to solve problems, take care of patients, uh, and really help the community and society better itself. Tyler, what do you want to do? After school, what's the goal? So right now I'm focusing on family medicine. Um, I like that it has quite a bit of variety to it, and I'm somebody who likes to be a jack of all trades, so to speak. Um, but with that, I'm looking into an emphasis of OBGYN as well as sports medicine. So kind of just keeping the, the cards on the table for now. So Dr. Peratt, you know, listening to Tyler, what advice would you have for her as a current student or possibly, you know, a potential medical student that wants to come to Burrell or med school in general? What advice would you have for them? Well, I would start with the concept of, of work-life integration. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there are only so many hours in the day. There's a lot to handle yeah. uh, as a medical student. Uh, and really, it's about managing that volume. Um, we often use the analogy, you know, how do you eat a buffalo? One bite at a time, but never all at once. Mm -hmm. And so it really is just a matter of, of strategizing, managing your time well, knowing how to prioritize, uh, knowing how to deal with, with stress and adversity, uh, and really to focus. Uh, it, there's a, such a volume of information that they are trying to master mm -hmm. that uh, there's not, not a lot of room for distraction and uh, not a lot of room for inefficient use of time. And so uh, if, if students are able to balance and manage the volume uh, and set aside some time to maintain wellness, um, I look at Tyler, it, she's it not, yeah. probably, <laughs> you know, sounds Great. easier than, than it is, uh, but it is doable and we have a lot of successful students making our jobs a lot easier. Can we talk a little bit and briefly, because I know they're giving me the, the time cue here, let's talk about uh, Burrell and Florida. We're expanding, very exciting news, tell me about this. Well, we are, uh, we are having our 
uh, pre-operational visit by our accreditation body next week, as a matter of fact. Uh, the next step is for us to get approval to enroll students for this coming fall term. Mm -hmm. We are currently interviewing applicants for the academic year 24-25, and we look forward to seating 100 students uh, in Florida, in Melbourne, Florida, on the campus of Florida Tech, uh, starting with the fall term. Takeaways here. I, I love to have takeaways when people watch something. What's the takeaway that you'd like to share, Tyler, to our viewers about, you know, coming to med school, about coming to Burrell, about preparing? What would you like to be a, take, a takeaway? Yeah. You know, I think the biggest takeaway is that it's really a step-by-step -step process. Like you said, you, you take it one step at a time. Don't try and consume it all. Um, but really enjoying that process for what it is. There's so much growth to be had. There's so much to learn from a professional and a personal standpoint. Mm -hmm. Being in medical school, you kind of learn to grow up pretty rapidly, so to speak. And so... You know, for those who are looking to go into medical school or, you know, even going to Burrell, you know, community is so important and feeling that you're supported and that you have resources and that you're getting truly a quality education are your top priorities. So no matter where you go, especially come to Burrell, <laughs> you can look for those things um, with our institution, but making sure that those things are highlighted and that you're making the right decision for yourself for your education. Dean Peratt, what's, what's your takeaway? Uh, you know, I, I think to build on what Tyler said, it's, uh, it, it really is about service and community. And uh, I think for those that feel called to the medical profession, I think it's a wonderful way to give back to the community uh, and, and really enjoy a very re rewarding, fulfilling career in, in medicine. Thank you both for your time. Sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for having thank us. Thank you for having us. And we've come up to our first break. Watch this. Have you heard of the Preceptor program? What is it and how does it help doctors and future doctors? That's next after the break. We have members of the Student Org Black Health Empowerment Alliance in the studio to share their perspectives on overcoming health disparities and representation within the medical community. That story after the break. Your time is now, right here at the Burrell College of Osteopathic Medicine. We have a 99% graduate residency placement and more than 850 physician preceptors, plus a simulation department, gross anatomy, and research labs. We offer Mission Medicine, a community-based learning experience. With two campus locations, New Mexico and a fourth coming in Florida. Go to borel.edu and apply today. And remember, your time is now. Hey everybody, welcome back. Student doctors need to get hands-on experience. And they go through rotations and they also do this through a program that we call a preceptor program, also known as clinical rotations. So joining us to give us some more insight and some explanation, I'm joined by two wonderful people. First, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Diego Ramos. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having me, Sydney. Absolutely. And then I want to introduce um, um, Irina with Burrell. She's the director of clinical education. But Irina, I know that I'm going to like really bomb the last name. So please say it for me. Sure. Giorgio Liani. Thank you so much. Giorgio Liani. Yes, hey, there great. you go. There you go. I, I said that great. You guys, thank you. thank you both for being on the show and to enlighten us on the Preceptor program. We really appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. So, Dr. Ramos, I'd like to begin with you. You know, you are um, uh, uh, board certified in general surgery and specializing in minimal invasive surgery. What's a day like for you? Oof. Well, it's uh, always a busy day. Very happy to have uh, a busy day with students, of course. But usually, if it's a non-surgical day, we usually see patients in the morning and in the afternoon. If it's a surgical day, usually it's on a Monday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, and Wednesday are my OR days, and we do surgery from 7.30 in the morning until we finish all the cases. You know, he, he, he let me know when, when he walked in that uh, he's actually on call. So <laughs> we got to be mindful that if, you know, if your phone beeps, we got to let you go. So exactly. yeah, very, very busy all the time. Oh, yeah. You know, the, when you were going through your, your clinical rotations, when you were getting that experience, talk to us about that. What was that like? When, when I was a medical student, um, it was a little bit different from now, but there's more regulations. Uh, I remember back in the days that when I was a medical student, we, 
we come at four, five in the morning, mm -hmm. get the list for the residents and the attendings, get all the vital signs, run on the patients, and then start running again with the residents, and then come back and run with the attendings, and then we'll do other cases with the attendings. You know, Irina, I want to bring you into this conversation. Absolutely. So, you know, Dr. Ramos is sharing, you know, a little bit about his experience when he was in med school. Perceptor program, clinical rotations, why are they important? Absolutely, yes, sure. So preceptor program is our program that where we have MDs and DOs, practicing physicians, who have bureau appointment. And they are critical in the program because they are helping our students to bridge theory and practice. Mm -hmm. They are the ones mentoring our students and provi providing this hands-on experience. So Dr. Ramos, so, so that's what you do with our students. You're giving them that hands-on experience. Talk to us about that. Correct. So usually they have some uh, training before going to the OR. I, I myself teach them how to scrub in in the case, how to s keep sterile, taking them through how to suture a wound, how to handle a laparoscopic camera. So it's, it's, it's very, very fun to see how the students learn the surgical techniques and it's really fun to see them being very excited about that. Well, you know, they're taking what they're learning in the classroom, right? And now they're applying it uh, in, in the real world, so to speak. Uh, talk to us about that, uh, Irina. Yes, absolutely. So and it, uh, medical school is a cohort-based curriculum. So the first two years is basically on campus, in the classroom, there are labs, there are some skills practices. Um, but once they hit their third and fourth year, they are on clinical rotations. This is very important for the students also to choose their specialty in what specialty they're going to be practicing in the long run, what specialty they're going to apply for their residency program. So we have uh, some core rotations and electives available to the students. Most, uh, most of the third year is focused on the core rotations, which is family medicine, internal medicine, surgery, OBGYN, pediatrics, psychiatry. But once they hit the elective stages, they can do the specialties that are not part of the core rotations, mm -hmm. and that helps them develop the idea what they want to um, practice once they are in um, their residence, which yes. specialty they want to apply for. So this is an amazing program, and it's very important to help the students to make those huge decisions that yeah. are going to impact their and lives. And it's quite an array that, that you shared, a bunch of different areas that they're going Absolutely. to go into. When, when you get a student, um, what's the first thing you say to them, or how, how does it begin? Well, I'll tell them uh, what are the expectations that I have from mm -hmm. them. They have to know all the patients that we have in the hospital. They have to learn how to present patients. Uh, a lot of times I want to mention something uh, about the students that you mentioned that they come, they think they want to do something or sometimes they don't know what specialty they want to pick and I have a lot of times uh, students that come and say that, well, I want to be a radiologist mm -hmm. and then they rotate through surgery and at the end of the rotation they say, you know what, I don't want to do radiology, I want to do surgery. So that's my passion, you know, when I, when I let the patient, when I let the students uh, change their decision and they want to pick surgery. You know, uh, and it, it, you're right, they, they get exposed to all these different mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. and maybe they can start fine-tuning what they want to focus on, right? Correct. And do you help guide them into maybe answering any questions that they may have? Of, of course, course uh, they have plenty of questions and I mean, every time they ask me, how is your personal life? How is that? How do you make time to work out and then spend time with your family and mm -hmm. be here in the hospital? So. Every physician is different, so you can make up your life the way that you want it. If you want to work all the time, you can work all the time. If you want to have some time with your family, you can have some time with your family. But, yeah, it, I always tell them how is the, the real life. You mm -hmm. know? So, well, Dr. Ramos has been working with some really unique technology that really cuts uh, surgery time and recovery um, time. Let's watch the story. I'm Dr. Diego Ramos Valadez. I'm a board-certified general surgeon and I work at Memorial Medical Center. The Da Vinci robot is a surgical platform or instrument that we utilize for surgery. The advantages of robotic surgery for the patient is the faster recovery, less pain, less blood loss. My name is Felicia Romero and I am a third year medical student at Burrell. 
Growing up, I attended a lot of medical missions where I saw how great of an impact the medical team were providing the people not only uh, immediate care but also for the long term. During the uh, rotations for the students, it's important that they have the access and they can experience the, the new technology. They scrub with me during the procedure, I do the procedure, they see all the benefits of the uh, robotic platform. I teach them what is a robotic platform and specifically how do I use the instruments. I am a visual learner and so being able to see the surgery at a magnified view, um, seeing the little incisions that he makes and how we are able to take out the gallbladder, appendix, even part of the intestines um, through the minimal cuts have been very cool. The Burrell Preceptor program is very important for me because it's something that I like to do, having students uh, learning the new technology. And over the last three years, I have been involved with the program. It's something that I love to do. Wow, that's some really fantastic technology that they're using. Yeah, it's really changing lives. Yeah, it's uh, giving a lot of uh, improvement on the outcomes after surgery. So, you know, in, um, in the 1990s when laparoscopic mm -hmm. surgery started, it was the same thing as now as robotic surgery, the change from open surgery to laparoscopic, and now from laparoscopic to robotic. There were some uh, skepticism about uh, robotic surgery, mm -hmm. but a lot of surgeons are adopting the, the new technology, and the best thing is the outcome for the patient. They, they have a really good outcome, less pain, less bleeding, uh, faster recovery. And uh, our preceptors are learning this information as well using this technology. I saw it firsthand. And for more information, if you want more information on that, you can go to Memorial Medical Center. Now, Edie and I have to ask you, uh, if people want more information on the preceptor program, where do they go? How do they do it? Absolutely, yeah. We currently uh, have rotation, clinical rotations in uh, seven regional academic centers in Las Cruces, El Paso, Albuquerque, um, Space Coast, Tucson. Um, we have Eastern New Mexico mm -hmm. and Four Corners. And uh, this is an amazing experience for our students. So we, of course, want uh, more preceptors to be involved in Absolutely. this. And if somebody is interested, our department, Department of Clinical Education, is happy to answer any questions. Or on our website, on uh, burel.edu, yes. we have a section there, Become a Preceptor, and that's where they have, can go and fill in the application, and we'll take it from there. We need more Dr. Ramos's, right? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Y'all, thank you both for your time. We sincerely appreciate it, and we'll be right back. We have members of the Student Org Black Health Empowerment Alliance in the studio to share their perspectives on overcoming health disparities and representation within the medical community. That story after the break. Your time is now, right here at the Burrell College of Osteopathic Medicine. We have a 99% graduate residency placement and more than 850 physician preceptors, plus a simulation department, gross anatomy, and research labs. We offer Mission Medicine, a community-based learning experience. We have two campus locations, New Mexico and Florida. Go to burrell.edu and apply today. And remember, your time is now. Here at Burrell College, we have just under 70 student organizations, very, very active clubs. And here to tell us about one of the student organizations is Ty Ford. Hi. You're a uh, second year student? I am, yes. Awesome, and you are also the president of the Black Health Empowerment Alliance, yes? Yes. Wonderful, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, wonderful to be here. Oh, thank you, and um, tell us about uh, BHEA. What is this exactly? BIA, so we are a medical school organization that helps to foster relationship between African American students, but also educate our classmates on black health disparities. So now, how do, how do you all do this as an organization? Do you go out into the community? Do you bring people in? Tell me about this. A mixture of both. So we do go out to the community, like our gala, and um, try to get our physicians that are also of color involved, but we also get students involved. We have general meetings where we discuss things such as racial issues that are within the healthcare field as well. So Ty, you know, I've interviewed uh, mm -hmm. several doctors, several mm -hmm. of your student doctor colleagues, mm -hmm. and many of them have told me that they went into the medical field 
because when they would go to the doctor, they didn't see anybody that looked like them. Right. How important is this? It's extremely important because when you see a physician that looks like you, you automatically feel like they care about the issues that you do have. I think it's also important for DO students to take this very seriously. We do take the mind, body, and spirit very seriously. Mm -hmm. And so when you feel good about the person taking care of you, you feel like your health is being taken seriously. Ty, can we talk a little bit about you? Yeah, of course. So yeah. um, why did you decide to go into, into medical school? Well, for me, I have this crazy interest with science. I was very interested in um, the disease process and also trying to figure out what causes a disease, but also how to treat it. The other thing I was very interested in is confidence, right? So mm -hmm. I believe that when we feel confident about ourselves, we, we feel great about our lives, right? So I, I'm interested in seeing how medicine can help build someone's confidence. You know, we were chatting earlier, mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to speak with Ty a little bit earlier, and you, I, I asked you, you know, so, what do you want to do after school? And, and you know, yeah. there was quite a few different answers, family medicine. Tell me a little bit about some of the different options you might be looking into. Yeah, so I am looking into dermatology or family medicine and doing aesthetics. Are you going to be uh, the next Dr. Pimple Popper? I would love to. <laughs> I would love to be. Actually. I would watch that yeah. show. I would watch that yeah, show. Yeah, I, I would love to do that. As, I, I basically want people to feel good about themselves while taking their health seriously. So. You know, uh, we had the opportunity to, to attend your mm -hmm. signature gala, yes. so I want you all to watch this. We are Black Health Empowerment Alliance. This is our second annual gala. We chose the theme Amplifying Underrepresented Voices. We are expecting approximately 90 people to be here, about 70 students, and we do have some faculty members as well as eight doctors who will also serve on a panel today. I've been involved with uh, the minority side of the university, the college from the beginning, and I can tell you that it's inspiring to see these, these young people gain the the level of achievement that, that they've gained. And I just think it's very important for us to make sure that we continue to be a part of that. I have a five-year-old and I'm a single mom and every day she's like, mommy, are you a doctor yet? Mommy, are you a doctor yet? And she's like beyond excited because every time we go to the doctor, she doesn't see anyone who looks like her. So right now she actually thinks I'm actually a doctor already. So it's kind of funny. But um, like I said, it's just, it's important to represent communities that are not represented. Sometimes it's hard to find someone that kind of looks like you, resembles you, has similar struggles. Um, and uh, so I felt like it's important that we have uh, people to help support others along the way. Positive reinforcement, encouragement, any way that we can help each other, um, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, anything. Um, it's important that we just support each other in the field. What a great story, Ty. And you know, I, I had the opportunity of, of being there myself as well. And I was just amazed to see all these doctors who represent the community. Mm -hmm. How important was it for you and, and your student colleagues to see representation up there? It was extremely important. It, it showed us that they cared. It showed us that they cared about an issue that we have been dealing with our lives and the past generations have been dealing with as well. So it, it really showed us that this is an important topic and it is something that we should educate future physicians on. You know, and you all as a student organization did this on your own. Yes. You reached out to these doctors and you said to them, hey, we want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. We want you to, we want to look up to you. We want right. you to be our mentors. Tell me about this. It was, at first it was very intimidating because, you know, they are physicians and we're just medical students, you know, so we were like, oh, we know you guys are super busy. And for them to, first of all, they were extremely enthusiastic about it, but for them to even respond mm -hmm. and also offer mentorship, that, that meant a lot to us. And I think it's going to encourage us to do the same when we're in their shoes. February is right on us, you know, right. Black History Month. Mm -hmm. Tell us what uh, BHEA is going to be planning for yeah. the month. Yeah, so we have quite a few events that we are planning for the month. Um, we do have a health screening, which we are putting together currently, mm -hmm. where we are planning on going to a predominantly black church and doing some basic health screenings. We are doing that. We also are having a series called A Lunch and Learn, where we will be discussing various health topics that regard um, black health issues. Mm -hmm. And then also we will have a few fun topics as well. We do have a family feud event coming up where we're talking about black history 
history and all are welcome to that. Awesome. So exciting to have you here and just very impressive what, what your organization is doing and, and the representation that you guys are pushing for. So thank you so thank much you. for being on the show. We sincerely appreciate it. Thank you so much. So that is our show. If you have any questions or story ideas, you can send us an email to communications at burrell.edu. We would love to hear from you. You can also follow us on our social handles. Our handle is at Burrell College. I'm Sidney Alvarez and until next time.